Welcome back. You're watching today. Now, the country is hosting the 15th BRICS Summit from a Tuesday. In fact, a lot of the uh, gatherings and exhibitions have already started to get underway with the BRICS Business Council hosting various discussions with business leaders from across the African continent and, of course, uh, between this uh, trading block. And a number of issues are being discussed uh, that concern the BRICS countries, but also the African continent. And one of the big talking points that has dominated over the last three years or so has been COVID-19, that pandemic, how it was dealt with by African countries and the reliance that we saw on the global West to get critical resources so that us on the African continent and members of uh, the, uh, well, citizens rather, of the BRIC member countries had to uh, deal with that, with the resources that they were given by the global West. So a large part of the conversation I was going to be how do we get the African continent the BRICS block to deal with uh, pandemics better the preparedness but also the prevention and providing the resources should we find ourselves amidst one again we've got Stra uh, uh, Stravlos Nikolaou who is uh, a member of the BRICS Business Council who joins us this afternoon to unpack this uh, discussion further uh, Stavros thank you very much as always for joining us it's an important conversation this issue of the pandemic and the preparedness of us as Africa, but I suppose as a trading bloc as a whole. Uh, give us a broad sense of the kind of conversation you hope will be unpacked with in this regard. Firstly, thanks very much for having me on your program again. It's, it's always much appreciated. Uh, this is a critical topic, and uh, as much as the BRICS Summit centers around um, political, social, and, and economic issues, we, we should never, ever forget the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic had, particularly on the African continent and in our own country here, South Africa. Uh, lives and livelihoods were lost on the African continent um, that through appropriate intervention, appropriate equality and, and uh, for example, availability of vaccines, lives and livelihoods could have been saved and regrettably weren't. Uh, so Africa has resolved that never again will Africa be in this position where lives and li livelihoods that were lost could have been prevented. And yet, because of a lack of domestic regional capacity and capability, we were un unable to appropriately respond as a continent. We, we relied on other continents and other geographies, and unfortunately, we were let down quite badly. So what is it immensely encouraging um, and a very strong signal, I think, is that the African Union, uh, under the leadership of President Cyril Ramaphosa, who uh, continues to be the African Union COVID champion, uh, Africa resolved to, to set about a pathway of establishing local, regional uh, and domestic capabilities and capacities in order to appropriately respond to any future pandemic. Now, it's not a question of whether we will or won't have a pandemic. We're already in a pre-pandemic phase in a sense that we know that there will be a future pandemic. So this topic is critical, both from a public health perspective, but also importantly, uh, e economies can never recover appropriately. We are still struggling in Africa to recover post COVID. So economies can never recover appropriately and uh, economic growth is dented when you cannot appropriately respond to a pandemic. So this is a public health issue as much as it is an economic issue and a very critical conversation that needs to be held. Mm. And I wonder, Stavros, as we look at what you've just said, to say we are at a pre-pandemic stage and we are likely to see another pandemic hit us and we don't want to find ourselves relying on the global West once again. Should there not be policies or regulatory environments created that incorporate a build-up of steady resources uh, that would be rolled out into the public health care system should we find ourselves uh, within um, the, the, uh, the pits of another pandemic? Uh, is that part of the conversation in that certain policies need to be created where there is an incorporation of um, a, a, a standardized build-up of these resources within government? governments across the continent, but I suppose also across the uh, trading block as well. Look, look policies um, are, are difficult to 
uh, to implement across uh, blocks. Uh, I think what is implementable, and, and this is driven by political will, and I believe the political will is there on our continent. We, we need a framework, uh, if you want to call it a, a playbook, so that at the point where we are hit by the next pandemic, there's, there's a playbook, the resources, the capabilities, and the capacities are all in place, and then we can respond immediately. And I think that requires a high degree of continental uh, cohesion and coordination. And, and I believe that there is already a strong sense of this coordination and cohesion taking place. Um, we have also seen um, some uh, significant signals, I believe, from the likes of the international and multilateral um, agencies. For example, the agency that procures most of the vaccines for Africa is, is called Gavi, uh, the Global Vaccine Alliance. And, and uh, because of these conversations that African leaders have been having with the likes of Gavi, with UNICEF and others, we are now starting to see a change in procurement policy mm. by these entities uh, to allow the procurement of vaccines to happen from Africa and the sustainability of these capacities on the continent. These are all very important developments. But we shouldn't take a foot off the pedal here. Um, what this uh, side event at BRICS on pandemic um, prevention, preparedness and recovery sets out to do is to lead up. It's, it's going to be a cascade of events leading up to a framework that we hope will be released uh, in Lusaka at the end of November at what we call the CPHIA conference. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that would also include uh, increasing the capability, the manufacturing capabilities, this uh, growing the skill set so that we have the development of various medicines or vaccines um, on the African continent by skilled um, um, uh, uh, scientists and the like uh, that come from the African continent. And then also then developing the manufacturing, the processing and distribution uh, capability as well. Not only does that uh, help with the issue of access to those critical resources, resources, but it has a double effect in that it contributes to economic growth. It, it most certainly does. And, and here I, I must commend the Africa Center for Disease Control, the Africa CDC, uh, which uh, played an invaluable role. Things could have been far worse on the continent had the Africa CDC not intervened uh, during COVID. And uh, what is extremely pleasing and encouraging for me is that the new Director General of the Africa CDC, I think he's only been in office for about three months, Dr. Jean Kaseya, is very much on that track. He's identified this as one of his most immediate priorities. And I think he's due to report on his first 100 days in office soon. And you will see that this is front and center building the, uh, the the vaccine and the medical countermeasure capabilities of the African continent is one of his foremost priorities. And I think you will continue to see an accelerated momentum towards achieving that. But of course, all of these things depend on having sustainable demand and that you have procurement of these vaccines from Africa for Africa. And that is where uh, the proof lies in the pudding. Mm -hmm. And then just a final thought from you, uh, Stavros, if you will. Uh, you've spoken about uh, the African Union uh, as well as other stakeholders that are involved in seeing what you've described to us when it comes to uh, ramping up public health across the continent. Um, when it comes to the discussions that you are having, what are the sources of all the um, resources you're hoping well, well you'll rally rather resources into which sectors to ensure uh, that the different components of public health are, are addressed accordingly uh, so basically the sectors that you're hoping uh, um, uh, investment opportunities and resources will be driven towards to uh, see uh, 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 see this be, uh, fruit the the, the event that I'm referring to, which will be held on the margins of the BRIC summit on the 24th of August, um, has a number of participants, um, including 
international agencies such as the World Health Organization, uh, regional agencies such as Africa CDC, Africa Health Business, and many subject matter experts in this field um, covering all continents. And um, the, the purpose of that is that we can only achieve health security. And, and incidentally, one of the biggest contributors to global peace and security is health security. And if people don't have health security, then you're going to see ongoing migration. Um, so we should never underestimate how important health security is, both for the economies of these countries, but also in terms of establishing social stability on the ground. So all these agencies uh, have been invited, and, and many of them will have panelists that speak. In fact, one of our battles at the moment is how do we keep the number of speakers limited so we can finish the program? Um, but that's a nice problem to have, I guess. But it will bring all these different agencies together so that we act in concert. We can only achieve uh, public health, uh, e equity, equality, and health security um, if the whole world works together. And this is why um, this uh, event on the 24th brings together both um, global, regional, and continental agencies it also brings together what is called the Johannesburg process, which is co-chaired by Professor Olive Shasano, who is an advisor to President Ramaphosa, and her counterpart, Jan Arne Rottinger, who is the uh, Norwegian Global Health Ambassador. They co-chair this Johannesburg process, which aims to bring the whole world together uh, so that we ensure this health security and health equality. So what I'm trying to say to you is to get to a point of health security requires pulling all the different role players together, getting them to act in a, in a supplementary and synergistic basis so that Africa is never ever left behind again. We can never be in a position or situation again where people are, are scrambling for vaccines, uh, I, I know that personally during COVID, my cell phone was full of messages um, from many distressed individuals saying, you know, my, my dad passed away, we could have saved him. My grandmother, I need to get her vaccinated or we, we fear we're going to lose her. And then a month later, you get the bad news. So we can never, ever be in that position again. We have to ensure that uh, these processes um, see the light of day and fruition, but more importantly, that we establish sustainable vaccine and other medicine countermeasure capacity and capability on our continent. So we never have to go out with a begging bowl ever again and say, well, please help us out the rest of the world. Because in the hour of need, unfortunately, people look at their food populations first and they help their populations first before anybody else. And that's exactly what happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, President Ramaphosa was very scathing uh, in an engagement with the global leaders about how the world reacted to Africa when the pandemic hit. Stavros, thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon.